CM Punk came out to open up the show, and he did a great promo talking about MJF. I had a picture of MJF, young MJF and CM Punk when he was a kid, and he pointed out that, you know, that was, uh, that was the greatest day of your life. For me, it was Tuesday. And it's going to be the greatest day of your life, or the bloodiest day of your life, Coming up in the pay-per-view, but for me, it's also just going to be Saturday or Sunday, whatever the day is. Anyway, the point is, he kept bringing up Roddy Piper and how MGF wants to be Roddy Piper in Portland. So, the stipulation for this match is going to be dog collar match coming up at the pay-per-view. You know what I'm saying, Mike? Dog collar match! Sorry, I didn't want to jump How in can you keep moving your mic out of the way? Because Golly. it's an AEW review, and you usually want to have these, so go ahead. Have at it. People have not heard from you in like 48 hours here. They want to hear from you. I know, so but I also haven't heard from Vinny, and I'm getting a text right here to make sure he's all right. Cool. So, well, is he okay? I don't know. I haven't heard from him, but I heard from Rod. Well, as you do that, I did like the way that CM Punk uh, emphasized, will you be my Valentine? And then Tony Schiavone said it because, yes, Roddy Piper did have uh, dog collar matches in Portland, had some great bloody brawls with... Buddy Rose, the Sheep Herders, people like that. But he is most famously known for, in his babyface form, the dog collar match with Greg the Hammer Valentine that began way back in 1982 when Ric Flair and Greg Valentine rammed his face into the concrete and scraped it all up. He was looking for revenge, and obviously that Piper-Valentine feud is pretty legendary. Those dollar collar matches are legendary, and I think a fine choice for a guy with MJF who keeps running away. I think it was a cool thing to do. All right, back to the show right here. We had uh, Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, and Christian backstage, and they're talking about the uh, the three way at the pay per view, a three way wrestling match, I might add. Uh, it's going to be uh, there's going to be two battle royals. The two winning teams will be facing Luchasaurus and uh, Jungle Boy in a three way, and uh, Jungle Boy made a comment about winning battle royals, and he patted Christian on the back because this is a two year storyline at this point where Christian Cage will finally screw Jungle Boy for throwing him out of that battle royal a year and a half ago or whatever it was, a year ago. Brian Danielson beat Lee Moriarty. Thought this match was great. Killed this poor bloke. They gave Lee Moriarty a lot, but he wasn't winning. And he took a beating, and it was it was glorious. And then afterwards, he called out John Moxley. He wants an answer to whether or not they'll team. And John Moxley came out, and he did this fabulous promo. And the gist of it is, if you want all the details, if I can find Vinny, we're going to do a Brian and Vinny show tonight talking about all the details. But gist of the the story here is that he has never beaten Brian Danielson. John Moxley has never beaten Brian Danielson in his career. And he said, you know what? I thought about everything you said. I thought it would be awesome to team up and do all those things you talked about. But I'm not sure if you want to team up with me or if you just don't want to wrestle me anymore. So essentially, it looks like John Moxley and Brian Danielson are going to be having a fight, a bloody fight. And after the fight's over, we'll find out if they end up teaming together. I am totally fine with this. If you want to team these guys together, knock yourselves out. But I want a match first. So it looks like we're going to get it. Wardlow beat Max Caster, face of the Revolution ladder match qualifier. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but my presumption is that Wardlow wins and uh, he gets the TNT title and MGF wants him to hand that title over and he doesn't. And that's going to be the end of that. But we'll see where it goes. Hangman Page promo. Adam Cole showed up. Adam Cole buries the guy, points out, I've been all over the world. I've shared a lot of locker rooms with you. We were roommates. But everywhere I've gone, you've always just been known as the other Adam. So, of course, Adam Page is furious, and he wants to fight. And Cole, wait a second, I, I respect you. I think that one of these days we're going to have a great match for that championship. And when we do, may the best man win. And he walks out, and he's got a smile on his face. And, of course, it's a ruse. Uh, Red Dragon attacks Page. They beat him down. Cole runs back. It's a three-way beating. Dark Order makes a save. They needed some reason for Adam Cole to face 10 on Rampage, so what they came up with was 10 beat up a bunch of security guards like a madman. I guess this was explained on uh, BTE, but it sure wasn't explained on Dynamite. Santana and Ortiz beat Jericho and Jake Hager. They had a good match, and 
At the end, out came Eddie Kingston, and Eddie Kingston distracted Chris Jericho. And Jericho ended up going for the Judas effect. He missed. Santana hit him with a lariat, pinned Chris Jericho. So it appears this split is pretty much, uh, I mean, I can't say it's inner circles for sure done, but it looks like they're done. And we'll have to find out what happens with, uh, with um, you know, what's his name? Who gets custody of Jake Hager and his Merlot Not Caprice? Not Jake Hager, but uh, Sammy Guevara, because he wanted yeah. them to figure their S out or he was going to quit. But yeah, Jericho did the job here and then had a big brawl with Eddie Kingston, so it appears that they are going to be having a match, probably at the pay-per-view. We have a lot of matches, it appears, coming up for this pay-per-view, and it's looking like a pretty good card. Thunder Rosa beat Mercedes Martinez in a no disqualification match. Way better than their first match. They had that lame DQ finish. But the lame DQ was done to set up a no-holds-barred, anything-goes, hardcore match. And Thunder Rosa beat her with a Thunder Fire Driver, Fire Thunder Driver, Thunder Fire Bomb. She dropped her on some chairs, pinned her, and then afterwards, Britt Baker and the crew came out and uh, they got in the ring and they wanted Mercedes Martinez to beat up Thunder Rose after the match, but she wanted nothing to do with this. And so they attacked her. They beat her up. And so we got a lot of things coming. We got obviously the tag match here that I'm sure could be done on Dynamite or Rampage. We got the championship match with Thunder Rose and Britt Baker, I'm sure coming up at the pay-per-view. So a lot of good stuff there. Malachi Black video with Brody King. There's a third guy coming, rumored to be the former Buddy Murphy, now Buddy Matthews. I don't like it. I want to see. I want to see that match, Malachi Black and and Buddy Matthews. Because you know what? They had a match on Raw. Two of them actually. There were two of the best matches on Raw in like all of last year. And uh, to think that they would be able to do that match with zero restrictions in AEW, I think this needs to be like CM Punk and, uh, or not CM Punk, um, uh, John Moxley and uh, Brian Danielson. They need to fight, then they need a team. So I can and I tell you what, fight. just throw this in there too for anybody that's looking for some old audio to listen to uh, Buddy Matthews' appearance on this program talking about some of those matches, the one at the Garden, the ones on TV, all that stuff with uh, and some of the, 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 the responses they got and some of the, the thought behind those matches with Malachi. I, I would strongly suggest anybody that didn't have a chance to hear him on here with us go back and listen to that show. I thought it was great. And then the main event, actually Rampage first. We've got uh, Adam Cole versus, no spoilers, Adam Cole versus 10. Jay White versus Trent Beretta. Serena Deeb with a five-minute challenge against some local geek. And we do have Powerhouse Hobbs versus Dante Martin face the Revolution qualifier, which that one's not uh, immediately obvious who's going to win. So at least we got one that uh, just reading the lineup, it is not spoiled. And then next week, we got uh, House of Black versus Death Triangle. Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho face-to-face in the Tag Team Battle Royale for the top contendership. Main event, Sammy Guevara and Darby Allen. Man, these guys had a great match because it is it, two guys, impossible for them not to have a great match. And uh, it was awesome. Then uh, Jose got involved, Jose, and got on the apron. Sting yanked him off, goes to beat him up. Referee's distracted. Andrade shows up, hits Darby Allen with his iPad, Sammy Guevara turns around. He sees the guy on the thing all knocked down. He's like, nah, got to do what I got to do. Hits him with the uh, GTH, pins him. And then uh, Matt Hardy runs down to beat up Darby Allen. Sammy Guevara chases him off. Uh, Andrade whacks him with the iPad, poses with both of the TNT titles. So obviously we got the face of the Revolution ladder match. And like I said, I think Wardlow's probably going to win and end up winning the TNT title. But I mean, there's so many things that they do where I look at this and I think, you know, Darby lost because of Andrade. Like, Andrade wants the titles. You could have Andrade beat Sammy, and then Darby gets his revenge on Andrade to win the titles back. I mean, there's so many things that you could do with with everything that they do here. Uh, But uh, we'll see what happens. Face of the Revolution ladder match coming up, and the winner is going to get a shot at that title at some point. I thought this was an excellent show. 
Yeah, I thought it was a really good one as well, too. And it makes a lot of sense with Wardlow to go ahead and win. He gets that designation on the pay-per-view. Not only that, it gives the re- another reason for MJF to cause some havoc and demand the title. And then that split happens there. It makes complete sense. Um Interesting to see what they'll do with MJF and CM Punk as well, too. I assume this is an official match. The dog collar match has long been one of the times where they will turn out the lights and they'll make it lights out. They'll make it unsanctioned. It will be interesting to see if they do something to move things into that direction by the time the pay-per-view rolls around. Just add a little bit of drama and danger to the match as well as, again, just just something that you can set up that you can do there where it won't affect anybody's record uh, in case you wanted to have Wardlow be the one that puts the the big mark on MJF here coming up as the official loss. Since they do like to do that, you can debate it. We talked about it with Orange Cassidy and with Adam Cole. We talked about it in the past with Thunder Rosa and with... um, uh, who was it? Britt Baker, I think it was, in that in the uh, unsanctioned match. So they are willing to do that. So it'll be interesting to see if they play that aspect of things going into that match. The dramatic reading of the Hulk Hogan Brutus Beefcake promo. Please welcome the Mega Maniacs, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and Hulk Hogan. Well, you know something, Mean Gene? Now more than ever, with just one week away, I'm aware of how destiny is going to take its course, brother. Because just a few short weeks ago, bro, when I was laying in the weeds at Venice Beach, California, and I had Monday Night Raw tuned in, I saw Money Incorporated run across the ring with a metal attache case with the speed of a lightning bolt. And as it crashed into Brutus, the bionic barber beefcake blood brother's face I saw what I didn't want to see I heard what I didn't want to hear the emotions ran from head to toe I chilled I goose bumped and I broke a sweat as I stood up man and I rushed from head to toe I spent two days running up and down the aisles of Kmart picking up that tonic getting all that hair color together And getting ready to do a number on Money Incorporated. I was sniffing for the hair tonic. I was sniffing for the butch wax. And lo and behold, as I kicked down the door of the Ramada Indoor at 48th and 8th Avenue, just a bit north of the Mid-City Gym, I found the brother, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, with his feet propped up on an ottoman, laid back in a lazy boy, watching Mo, Larry, and Curly with an ice pack on his nose. Thank God for the man upstairs, that Brutus the Barber is okay. So I took to the desert outside Las Vegas, chopping down some big nasty-looking cactuses, trying to dull up the titanium steel blades, chopped down a couple of small mountains, and then it came to me, brother. I knew that I'd just throw the scissors away because I'm just going to yank the hair right out of their heads. So Las Vegas, Nevada, and the whole wide world... What are you going to do when the Mega Maniacs run wild on you? The Hulkster, Hulk Hogan, and Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and Mouth of the South Jimmy Hart, the Mega Maniacs, perhaps the next tag team champions of the World Wrestling Federation. The Hulkster has never looked better live and in mint condition. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.